This question tells us to focus on the underlying portion, but that doesn't mean we only read that. We have to read everything because sometimes we get a lot of good information from the other stuff, and sometimes the choices relate us back to the rest of the passage. Plus, it's not that long of a passage, so you're not really saving any time by skipping those other sentences. Let's read it. I actually like to start here. The narrator is a young girl living in Pittsburgh. Okay. I walked. My mother had given me the freedom of the streets as soon as I could say our telephone number. I walked and memorized the neighborhood. I made a mental map and located myself upon it. At night in bed, I rehearsed the small world's scheme and set challenges. Find the store using backyards only. Imagine a route from the school to my friend's house. Well, that sounds like the challenges, right? Especially because there's a colon. What does a colon do? It it, kind of means that the second part is an answer to a question implied by the first part. So what are the challenges? Find the store using the backyards only. Imagine a route from the school to my friend's house. It sounds like those. So I don't know. Seems like that. So what's the purpose? A, it describes the narrator trying to memorize her telephone number. No, it's not about the number. It's about the locations, right? What's the number? No. So it's not about that. B, it provides examples of what the narrator thinks about at night. Uh, maybe because I, now I'm like, oh, do we, is it happening at night? Let's go back a little bit. Um, uh, my mother gave me the freedom I made a mental map. At night in bed, I rehearsed a small world scheme. Okay, so that part checks out. Maybe that is the answer. I genuinely don't know. But notice how I didn't notice that part about the night when I first read it. It didn't jump out to me as being important. But that's okay, because it doesn't disappear. It's not like as soon as you read the passage, it's gone, and whatever's in your memory is all you've got. You can go back. And the choices tell you what to care about. So rather than waste time memorizing that detail earlier, I just let it go. And now the choice is saying that this is about things that she's thinking about at night. I can go check that, and sure enough, it checks out. So that seems good. Let's look at C and D, though. It gives directions to the narrator's local store, favorite local store. No, it does not. It imagines her going to find these kinds of routes, but it doesn't have the directions, so it does not do that. It portrays the narrator's relationship with her mother. No, they talked about the mother earlier, but it's not about that. It's much more about now the challenges, and they specifically say things that she thinks about at night. So yeah, there we go. But again, I want to stress, I did not pay any attention to the night part the first time I read it. And it's okay. You don't need to memorize all the details. That's why we talk about dumb summaries. That's why we talk about strong words. But strong words don't always have to be just in the passage. They can also be in the choices. And then the choices let you go back to the passage and look for similar ideas. This, In this case, it literally was night, the same word in both cases. It won't always be. In fact, it usually won't be. But take with a win when you can get it. This is a nice little setup they gave us. Very easy question.